Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. The Planning and Zoning Commission is a citizen advisory group to the City Council charged with making recommendations concerning land use plans, planning processes, and are on matters of plan implementation. All regular meetings of the Planning and Zoning Commission are recorded for record retention and transcription. The following is the official agenda of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Discussion and commission action will be limited to those items on the agenda. Any citizen who wishes to address the commission shall first be recognized by the chair and shall give his or her name and address for the record. If a citizen wishes to read documentation of any sort to the commission, he or she shall first seek permission from the chair. Oral testimony may be restricted to no more than three minutes per person. Agenda item number one is roll call and disclosure of conflict of interest, ex parte communication, and site visit. So, Aislinn, if we could have you call the roll, and if each commissioner would please state your name, what area you're from, and anything that you may need to disclose. Jared Burnt. My name is Jared Burnt. I live in the Highland area. I was able to visit agenda item number four and number five, and I have nothing to report. Bill Hancock. I'm Bill Hancock. I live in the Lewis and Clark neighborhoods. I made a site visit to agenda item number five and I have nothing else to report. Sean Hargraves. My name is Sean Hargraves. I live in the university neighborhood. I conducted a site visit for agenda item number five and I have nothing else to report. Jack Moore. My name is Jack Moore and I live in the Old Town District and I to the site visit to item agenda item number five and I have nothing else to report. Sarah O'Connor. My name is Sarah O'Connor. I live in the college neighborhood and I have nothing else to report. Julia Sanders. My name is Julia Sanders. I live in the South Park area. I completed a site visit to agenda item number four and have nothing further to report. Ryan Satterfield. I'm Ryan Satterfield from the Highland area. I did a, a site visit to item number five and have nothing else to report. All right, thank you. Now we will move uh, to agenda item number two, approval of minutes. Um, commissioners, I assume you've uh, looked through the minutes. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Or otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll, se oh. I'll second that. Very good. It's been moved and seconded. Daislin, would you call the vote? Moore? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Burnt? Yes. Hancock? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number three. Uh, this is elections, and so um, we come about this time every now and then where we get to do elections and elect a chair as well as a vice chair for the commission. Um, how that will work is as commissioners, you may nominate uh, any member of the commission to serve in, in either of those capacities. Once there's a second, then we will have a vote on that uh, position. And so we're also open to any discussion that uh, might be had for the elections. So with that, I'll open it up and ask for any discussion. I can say that I think that our current chair, Ryan Satterfield, has been doing an excellent job as the, the chair of the commission, has a lot of experience. Um, I apologize that I'm having to step down and necessitate changes, but I would recommend that Ryan Satterfield continue to serve as chair and that Julia Sanders, I would nominate Julia Sanders to serve as vice chair of the commission. I think she's done an excellent job and has a lot of experience here on the commission. Very good. Let's do one position at a time. And, uh, and so if we wanted to we start- Anyone second? Move. Right, and so if we wanted to have someone second, either or both of those, and then we can we can take a vote. I will second for the chair. Okay. So we've got uh, moved and seconded um, for the chair position. Aislinn, would you call that vote? Hancock. Yes. Sanders. Yes. Burnt. Yes. Hargraves. Yes. Moore. Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. 
Motion carries. Now for the vice chair position. Other motions can be made, seconded, uh, as well as the previous motion can be seconded. I'll second the previous motion. Very good. So motion for uh, Julia Sanders as vice chair has been moved and seconded. Aislinn, would you call that vote? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Burnt? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Satterfield? Yes. Motion carries. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. <clears throat> All right, agenda item number four. Uh, public hearing for a conditional use permit. This time has been set aside for the commission to hear comments from the public re regarding a request by Thomas Development Company and Northwest Integrity Housing Company for a conditional use permit at 2500 South 5th Avenue for a supervised group living facility. The property is located within a commercial general zoning district and this use is allowed through the conditional use permit process. So with that, we are going to open this as a public hearing and would ask that the applicant please come forward and uh, make their presentation. Good evening, Mr. Chair and uh, commission members. I, I was smiling during the process of electing uh, chairs and vice chairs. I, I've read this book before. I got to do the same thing on design review for 12 years. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm Andy Erstead with Erstead Architects. We are the project architect for Thomas Development and Northwest Integrity Housing. And, and uh, before you is a request for conditional use. Um, and it's, uh, from our perspective, it's pretty str a pretty straightforward request. Staff um, has done a fabulous job. We work closely with them. They've been very supportive, but they've also been uh, very helpful in suggesting some changes and whatnot. I have uh, a couple slides I wanted to show you. I know they're in your packet as well. This project is located um, in the old Farmers Call Center, uh, Claims Call Center. It's been vacant for a little while and I think needs a boost of energy and we think we have the right project for you. Um, the, uh, the project at this point is 45 uh, senior housing units that will, be, um, that will be put into the existing building which sits along here. This is a two-story component and then this is all one story. A couple of things uh, that we love about the project and the site is just the, um, just the general configuration. We will be removing some of the building, and that is in this general area here, so that we can get um, so that we can get some daylight internal into the into the building. I don't know if any of you are very familiar with it, but it's about six different projects uh, morphed throughout the years. And the last the last addition was this two-story addition of. Uh, 70s modern ribbon window, curved, you know, curved stair towers. It has a ton of potential. We love coming in and doing this to old buildings where we renovate them and uh, bring in some some additional stuff. And I know we're not here to talk about the design, but um, we're really excited from that perspective. Um, the floor plan, just uh, zooming in, uh, again, I go up and show you that this area right here will be, as we use the really gracious term as eroded away. We're just going to rip it down, uh, just cut into the building and uh, use that to create uh, daylight and courtyards in here. And then this courtyard and all of this green space actually exists. So I noted a few of you are able to get by the site. And if you haven't, um, I would just drive by it out of, out of curiosity from the perspective that it's, uh, it's kind of a park-like setting. So to bring uh, 45 seniors, uh, senior housing units into this project without, literally without adding more square footage, but actually taking some away is um, we think is going to be a great a great addition to the neighborhood and really consistent with the goals and objectives of the ordinances the uh, next slide it, sorry wrong direction the next slide is really showing the, the second story of the of the existing claim center and 
we have some fun things to deal with as as i said it's six or seven we're not quite sure how many buildings and uh, records didn't have records of all the various stages but um, there's some bearing walls some some um, shear walls and some of the structural components that we get to deal with in projects like this um, at the end of the day we're excited with the general direction that we're that we're going um, I'll show you one other slide. Okay. <laughs> So this slide just uh, picks up on um, the existing building and it, it really is just uh, what we're gonna be doing is cutting in and opening up some of the windows. We're gonna be, um, you see in the background, some, some roof monitors to bring some daylighting down into corridors and things of that nature. The floor plans are consistent with the floor plans that, that we've shown you as well. There is, um, there's a couple of other components that we think are very important, and I'm gonna have Madeline Gregg um, from Thomas Development talk just a little bit about the other aspect of this project, and that is that um, these, uh, these 45 senior apartments aren't just apartments with, um, with doors and people coming and going at any time. The, um, all of the Thomas Development and Northwest Integrity Housing Projects have a resident manager. So one of those apartments is for a manager that maintains and lives on, on the premises. The other, uh, the other aspect, and in, in the plans currently, we're showing a lot of open space in the, in the floor plans. And um, where the, in those areas we will be including um, officing and clinic spaces for the, um, for the allied and associated service providers that are going to be part of this. And, and Madeline will talk a little bit about that in, in just a second. Um, the, other, the other aspect that we're excited about is that um, the, the property has uh, the opportunity for us to bring uh, parking, a little more parking. We figured that each one of the units uh, comes with a car typically. A, a senior, that's one of the last things they want to give up is their car. They'll move, they'll move from 3,500 square feet down to, to 1,000 square feet, but don't take that car away yet. Um, and, and we also find that a lot of times over the years they stop using it because the services provided will bring transportation and mobility into the community. So they're not just uh, stuck there. Um, so we're really excited with the project. Um, we're very uh, excited to be working with you all and um, staff's conditions of approval are, we're fine with all of the conditions of approval. We've, we've talked a lot about that. I think probably the one that's the, the biggest gray area is that uh, the property has a two-tier parking lot that um, we probably won't be using very much of it because we're bringing some of the parking down closer. So how do we screen uh, that for this tier uh, that's, that's been there for as long as the farmer's facility has been there? And um, we're, we're game for working that out. So I would stand for questions before I bring Madeline up or you can wait and ask me at the end. Any questions? Let's have Madeline Great. come up. Good evening, my name is Madeline Gregg. I work for Thomas Development Company. Um, recently, Connie Hoagland and I, the Executive Director of Northwest Integrity Housing Company, have been working with six local agencies to provide supported services on site for the residents of Kirk Hill. Um, so I gave Carl a copy of the plan that we've been working on, but I just wanted to give you an overview of who will be providing what services to the residents. So we have Aid for Friends who will be identifying the potential residents with the greatest need. And then we also have the Southern Idaho Council of Governments, and they're going to be connecting residents um, with community resources to help with substance abuse and um, recovery. And then we also have the Area Agency on Aging, and they will be um, providing case management for each resident to help them with their individual needs. We'll also have Health West, and they'll be providing mental health and health services. And the Housing Alliance of Community Partnerships will be having renter education classes monthly for the residents. 
and the Southeast Idaho Community Action Agency will be having financial literacy classes quarterly and Meals on Wheels on site three times a week. So if you have any questions about the support services, I'd be happy to address them. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Chair, that's all we have. Perfect, Great. appreciate it. All right, Carl, if we could hear uh, from staff. All right, good evening, Chair and members of the commission. Uh, my name is Carl Anderson, uh, planner for the city of Pocatello, for the record. You know, as indicated by the applicant, the application you have before you is a conditional use permit submitted by Thomas Development Co. and Northwest Integrity Housing to allow for group living supervised uh, within the commercial general zoning district. Uh, as stated, the property, uh, the proposed proposal is located at the southeast intersection of uh, Barton and South Fifth Avenue at 2500 South Fifth. Uh, the building was previously, previously occupied by Farmers Insurance, and the proposal is to utilize the building uh, for a senior housing facility and associated services. Uh, the subject properties include four tax parcels totaling 9.28 acres, more or less, and are located at the, again, southeast corner of uh, South Fifth and Barton. As proposed, the development will accommodate uh, 45 uh, dwelling units, uh, more or less, and include an on-site residential manager. Each unit will be self-contained and on-site community gathering spaces uh, comprised of a community kitchen area, recreational opportunities, um, as shown on the floor plans, a kind of some flex space and a library area will, be also, will also be provided, and as well as the on-site services, as indicated by the applicant. Uh, uh, at this point, as the parking lot is existing and the, the property line to the east of the existing building is through about 390 feet from the existing building, um, staff recommends removing condition number five, allowing staff to continue working with the applicant uh, to determine the need for screening, a screening fence along that eastmost property line there will find the adjacent uh, um, not mobile home park, but, <laughs> but the uh, RV park. Uh, all noticing requirements have been met, and at this time, uh, one phone call has been received by staff. Uh, no additional comments have been uh, submitted to staff. Uh, based on the review and analysis of the application materials, subjects, site, and surrounding areas, and applicable municipal code sections, staff finds the proposal, the proposed development meets the criteria review of this UV, assuming compliance with the conditions attached to the staff report. Planning Zoning Commission may wish to approve, approve with conditions or deny the conditional use permit application and authorize the chair to sign the findings of fact. So this concludes my presentation and I'm happy to stand for any questions that the commission may have. Thank you, Carl. Any questions for Carl? Thank you. Now we will move into uh, gathering public testimony. And so we will start, uh, we will go through three different rounds. First with those who uh, might have testimony in favor of the application, then those who might be uh, neutral on the application, and then those who are opposed to the application. So uh, anyone who wants to give testimony, if they would st please state their name as well as their address, and then we'd like to limit that testimony to three minutes. So now those who are in favor, if there are any, that would like to come forward and give any testimony. Seeing none, those that uh, are neutral to the application. If none, are there any opposed that would like to give testimony? Very good. We will then close the public hearing. Commissioners, it's before you. Any discussion? I think I have a couple of questions for the applicant. Okay, if we could have you please come forward, a couple more questions. So this is more design oriented um, because I work in the health field and so I feel like in a sense I have a stake that this goes well so that my patients end up being able to come here. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to know are all of your rooms set up for single occupancy or some of them set up for double double occupancy? Some are set up for single and some are set up for, for double. Okay. I didn't see anywhere, and I'm probably just missing it, um, where there would be an elevator from the first floor to the second. If I'm going to... Okay. <laughs> This is Caitlin Kessler. Caitlin's been doing most of the most of the field work and drawings for me, and <clears throat> they have this technology thing down. There we go. So I'll, if I can have you look over in this general area, the existing elevator sits right here. 
Uh, so we're considering this kind of the front, uh, the front entry, and if you're a guest coming in, you would have access to the elevator. The only two-story portion of the building is this portion right around here. Right. Okay. Oh, you're looking. <laughs> Why isn't she looking over there? <laughs> It's intimidating. <laughs> so, so the elevator. Um, in fact, we've we've ridden the elevator. We know it works, um, and we've tape measured it, and we know that it that it works for two things. We uh, we constantly worry about the ability to get a wheelchair in and and an aid, and we also worry about the ability to get a gurney in, and it both. Uh, the elevator's a large for the for the time frame when the building was built. It's a large elevator, so we're good on we're good on that aspect. And, and if I can, um, we have a number of uh, of uh, units that are actually two bedroom units in in the project, and I'll just uh, point those out. Um, this unit here has living and kitchen, bedroom and bedroom, and. Um, these are these are a, a model based on a model and a plan that we've used in, gosh, a number of senior housing communities. Um, so we know that they work and they work well, and we know that they meet with HUD's requirements and they meet with the clients' requirements with um, Thomas Development and Northwest Integrity Housing. So um, that's where we get to the point of uh, some have multiple, you know, with the two bedrooms shared and with the one bedrooms. And I know you said all of the units are self-encompassing. Um, people can cook their own. At that age, most of my patients don't. Um, I know you talked about the Meals on Wheels being on site, was it three times a day, I think? Three times a week. Three times a week. Um, would there be any kitchen facility for the larger <clears throat> hole and then an adjacent dining room with it? So. Uh, Chairman Sanders and, and Commissioner, uh, or Commissioner Sanders, Chairman Sanders. Um, the, the challenge that we have right now is that we've got a lot of development still to do. So we will be keeping, we will be working in the, the supports facilities and, and um, the offices and the, the clinical areas as well as the um, public uh, community areas. And, and we have those typically when we do a, Two projects for Northwest Integrity Housing. We do 48 units, and they're stacked in a very long line, so 24 and 24. And in that in that knuckle, as we call it, we have um, on each level we have community service and community um, spaces. So we're working through those in the layout now. Your but your comments are welcome and they're appreciated. Mr. Chair, I just have a comment that I I think that this is a fills a need within the community that I've become aware of, of, of having housing uh, for this group and the services would be wonderful also to help some of our most vulnerable uh, citizens within the community. Uh, based on the presentation and everything that's been given, I move that we approve agenda number, item number four for uh, conditional use permit for the old farmer's building located at 2500 South 5th. Mm -hmm. And that we also authorize you as the chair to sign the findings of fact on this. Thank you. With that motion, do you want to address the staff's uh, recommendation that we also remove the uh, recommendation number five? Yes, the conditions? I, I appreciate that, and I failed to mention that, but I do believe that the recommendation number five currently in there should be removed. I know that the ex uh, existing parking lot is not being changed. It's been there for a number of years. It wouldn't change anything. In fact, it probably is going to be used less than what it was when Farmers was operating out of that call center. So I would recommend that we just simply remove recommendation number five. So we have a motion. I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? And I guess I'll, I'll give some discussion on it as we go into it, that I think that this is a good project. Um, I like to see, especially as we have some of these buildings that have you know, kind of had a history in Pocatello for sure, um, can be reborn and, and create new history. And I think that this is a good move and, and a decent location to do something um, like this as well as uh, become a good asset for the community. 
committee like you're speaking any other discussion on the motion very good a slim would you call the vote yes 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 motion carries all right agenda item number five public hearing for contract rezone this time has been set aside for the commission to hear comments from the public regarding a request by Kenneth Horsley for a contract rezone for property located in the 9100 block of Anderson Lane the request is to rezone by contract from residential medium density single family to light industrial for commercial self-service storage so with that we will now open the public hearing and ask for the presentation from the applicant as soon as they're ready <laughs> Pretty swanky looking if that's what you're building. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I can get this new build. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little disappointed now. <laughs> Uh, good evening, Commission members. My name is uh, Mitchell Greer. I'm with Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying, uh, 600 East Oak here in Pocatello. I appreciate the opportunity to be here to present this uh, project with you. It's going to be a little different because I don't have a screen in front of me, so we'll see how this uh, how this goes. But, um, so what we're here tonight to propose is a project, uh, a location that has been had a couple of different uh, projects proposed on it through history. Uh, none of those projects have been successful. Uh, some residential type projects and we've looked at this uh, particular piece of land a few times over the last uh, say 20 years for some type of development. Um, all of those have uh, never come to fruition for a number of reasons. Um, just so you're uh, aware of where the project is, and let's see if I can orient to north, so that'll make things a little easier. But this is Pocatello Creek Road, so we're at the uh, east boundary of the city, essentially, as you go up Pocatello Creek Road. Um, the, uh, this right here is Booth, Booth Drive. And then you have Daryl Loop here, which are some uh, projects that were uh, developed a long time ago. Uh, what we're proposing is a storage facility, a safety, we call it uh, Pocatello Creek Safety Storage. Uh, it's going to be an indoor and outdoor uh, type facility. So we have uh, some outdoor storage located in kind of the southern uh, boundary of the project. And then we have a number of uh, storage buildings as you move through uh, through the through the proposal. Uh, one thing that's a little unique here with this particular project is we are proposing uh, kind of an office area that would have uh, you know some facilities like a restroom and and some things so that uh, some of these other storage units don't necessarily have that. But this would be you know just a, a place where uh, the tenants or the, the renters would be able to. To, to use those types of facilities that they, they might need when they're there. The way we have it set up is this is kind of a one-way loop in and out, so uh, cars and, and uh, tenants would enter kind of on what would be the west approach and, and enter in and then they would come in like this, uh, utilize their storage unit and then come out uh, this uh, east side. And uh, one thing that we uh, that we have with this project is uh, it's very isolated from the surrounding area. So we're we're showing kind of a buffered area around the entire exterior, um, and as well as a screen fence. And so uh, you can kind of see that in the in the proposal. And then uh, we placed a couple of different gates uh, again further into the project so that people aren't you know impacting traffic on Pocatello Creek Road, they can get in, uh, wait, use the gate facility, and then, then uh, go on into the, to the development. 
So a little history, uh, it seems to me like, uh, you know, we recognize that the staff has uh, said that this isn't a good fit for the neighborhood because it's all residential, right? So let's give a little bit of history and maybe some, uh, you know, I think the residential zoning is, is true, but as far as residential uses, I think we could maybe disagree on that with staff. And so let me just kind of walk around the neighborhood and uh, we can kind of look at some of those uses. So if you look kind of immediately adjoining to the east, you can see this is kind of a, a yard area here. Um, that has been used as kind of a contractor storage uh, staging where they stage contracting equipment. I think if I uh, turn on the street view, you can kind of see there's other things there as well. So uh, although it's not organized storage, uh, it is uh, storage per se, um, and maybe that will come, maybe we'll be able to see that, but um, it's not coming into focus very well, but there, you know, this is, you know, various equipment and things like that that they've used this for, and, and kind of an interesting thing is that it's within the county, not the city. Um, so the boundary uh, runs kind of along, the boundary of the city, uh, runs along this eastern this eastern line and this is an access road that currently uh, services this property as well as some other residences and some other things there uh, what we're proposing to do is eliminate this our use of this road so we're going to we're going to create our own independent project within this area so this is uh, this is as we said storage that's what this was uh, prior to Mr. Horsley purchasing the property. He's basically removed all that excess material um, over the years and cleaned it up and made it uh, quite a bit nicer than what it, uh, what it was when he purchased. So there are two residents here. So there's a, there's a resident kind of located in this area. There's a resident in this area. So those are both uh, single family homes. Mr. Horsley has talked to both of those. Uh, those people and they may be here to testify. I'm not sure. So this right here is uh, Mr. Horsley's shop. That is a business. He he operates his business out of that building. Um, and some of this uh, some of this right here are some is his equipment and things that he uses for that. So you know as you go up on the hill, there's pretty well buffered from this development. But up on the hill, obviously there's residences up here but they're very you know there's quite a bit of uh, terrain and and separation again from this development on as you move uh, south so everyone in Pocatello is familiar with the booth barn uh, that's operated as a commercial business for as long as I've been in Pocatello now it's a church um, but again this has been a commercial use over time and it's a church now um, not necessarily a, a a neighborhood function. This right here is a contractor shop um, that also has storage associated with it. So our immediate neighbor to the to the uh, uh, west again has storage and shop. And this is a parking lot that services uh, the church uh, ball field, which again also is not necessarily a neighborhood. Uh, functioning facility this uh this is used by a lot of people outside of this community that come in not our community but outside of this particular neighborhood that come in and use this for uh, for recreational facilities and again sometimes those uh, activities occur you know late later into the evening i would say and then of course here we have a residential residential use so there's there's one, you know, major resident that's impacted in this location. Uh, one of the things we did is we, you know, we've isolated, we've isolated that as much as we can. So we put that driveway in and, and provide some screening along there, along with the fence, and to get kind of where our activity is more removed uh, from that residence. This is a duplex residence. Uh, Mr. Horsley purchased the property from uh, that person, and I think. If this meeting goes long enough, he'll be here to come and testify in, uh, in support of the project. Uh, across the street, again, is another residence, and I think we may uh, find some, some support for the project from that, from that residence as well. 
Um, so if you really look at it as a whole, all of this area is really kind of a commercial type use. It has residential zoning, as I said. Again, there's this little area here that has some residential use. This is all commercial use. I would consider this formally a commercial use. This is commercial. This is not necessarily residential use either. And we have this little component right here that's residential use. So again, it looks, it sounds worse, I think, than what it really is when we when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it. And uh, one thing I would point out, uh, we started this project a year and a half ago maybe, uh, is when we first started to try to put this together. Uh, we've been working with the, the LDS Church, and so I wouldn't say that's what's delayed the project, is there some, some things that we had to uh, work through with them, and they are not in support of the project, but we certainly removed all of their opposition to the project. So uh, that uh, was a positive thing that we were able to do and, and able to move forward. Uh, based on that. So uh, I think that's kind of a good uh, summary. You can kind of see the logic behind why we put it here. Um, obviously, we're hoping to take advantage of, of the vast Satterfield neighborhood. Uh, that right now is probably the majority of those people using storage are, are going to Chubbuck, uh, to some of those storage units down on, on Chubbuck Road. And so this is uh, located in a pretty good proximity to service that neighborhood, as well as these, you know, these surrounding uses here. And uh, we think it is, although staff disagrees, again, we think it is a good use of this property. Um, I want to just highlight to, uh, we're not proposing just a standard uh, storage unit building. We're trying to put in some, uh, different uh, textures and things like that onto the exterior of the building. So there'd be some different uh, things to kind of break it up and maybe give it a little bit different feel than just a standard uh, metal storage building. So we've taken that into account. The other thing that we're trying to do is, is we're gonna pave the facility so that it's, uh, you know, it is a little bit uh, more than what's required by the code. And we, we think that'll be a little more sensitive on the neighborhood. And, and just uh, make it a much better project for that area. And just keep in mind that most of the, you know, these surrounding roads and accesses are just gravel. So um, I guess that's, uh, Mr. Horsley may want to say something um, as well, but that's the end of my presentation. I can answer questions or we can wait till after the public hearing and my rebuttal if you'd like. Thank you, Mitch. Are there questions for Mitch right now? Uh, Matt, if we could have the staff report. Mr. Horsley, one second, is he here? He is. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Commission members, Matthew Lewis, Senior Planner with the City. Um, the applicant has submitted an application to rezone by contract approximately 3.5 acres of land located in the 9100 block of Anderson Lane, a private road extending south off of Pocatello Creek Road from residential medium density single family to light industrial. The applicant desires to construct eight self-service uh, structure, structure, say that three times, uh, totaling uh, 258 units, uh, more or less, um, and uh, details on the area are not provided with the application. However, most storage, self-storage vary in size from 10 by 10 or 10 by 12. An outdoor storage area for recreational vehicles and boats will also be provided on the south portion of the site. And you can refer to the renderings that are within your uh, packets there. Current zoning will allow construction of single family homes with minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet, townhomes in groups of two or greater, uh, with a minimum lot size per unit of 4,000 square feet and duplexes with a minimum lot size of 8,000 square feet. Staff estimates that 15 to 22 residential units may be possible if developed under the current uh, zoning uh, designation. 
traffic impacts would be greater with residential development versus the proposed units. For example, generally residential development uh, generates 10 trips per day for a total of 150 to 200 trips, 220 trips. In comparison, according to the trip generation manual, the number of trips for a 258 storage units per day is estimated to be 72, uh, that's for a weekday, 64.5 on Saturdays and 46.5 trips on Sundays. Regardless of the limited traffic impacts noted, staff finds that storage units and outdoor storage does not blend in with residential uh, structures and adjacent open space. The use may have a low impact in noise and traffic generation depending on hours of operation. The buildings will not exceed uh, 20 feet in height, which is compatible with nearby residences. However, the overall mass and scale of the structures would be out of character with the nearby residences. The physical location of a storage use surrounded by residential uses would not uh, typically be appropriate. A small portion of the property is in a designated floodplain. As such, development is permitted provided existing elevations are maintained. The elevation will be reviewed as part of a building uh, permit application. The comprehensive plan map has the subject property designated uh, residential. Notice of the public hearing was mailed to political subdivisions and all property owners within a 300 foot radius of the external boundaries of the subject property in order that they may uh, provide comment on the proposed contract rezoning. Notice was also published in the Idaho State Journal and a sign was posted on the subject property adjacent to Post South Creek Road. Staff has spoken, or spoken with two citizens regarding their request and uh, in pre-agenda you received a letter that staff received um, uh, late, um, right before your meeting. I believe they were in, um, uh, in favor of the, of the request. That being the case, the Plan and Zoning Commission may wish to render a recommendation on the request and authorize the chair to sign findings and facts. Um, staff has also uh, provided uh, some conditions in, in, the, um, in the case of the commission uh, recommends approval. Um, this concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, do you have questions for Matt? Matt, there was some comment by Mr. Greer earlier that over the years, several things have been looked at on that property, but have never been able to develop. Are you aware of, or can you give any record as to um, any barriers that might be to residential development in the area as opposed to this development? Um, my recollection is, is about 2007, 2008, there was, a, there was a residential development that was being proposed. Um, they went through the preliminary plat uh, stage, um, but with residential developments, it's typically, it, after you do your due diligence, it could be more expensive uh, because you're putting in public roads, uh, extending sewer water, so forth. Um, my recollection is is that there was some issue with with the extension of sewer um, there, and uh, after the the uh, applicants did their due diligence following the preliminary plat, uh, I think that the cost was just this was too much for them, and also it was a time when the economy kind of kind of went south, um, so. No, that's the only one I can recall. Um, I do believe that there may have been one with Mr. Anderson as well, um, and uh, that never came to fruition. There is no public utilities that are nearby to hook up to. They would have to be run there, is that correct? I believe with, this, the, with what they're proposing there with the uh, just the office and so forth. They, I think you could probably just run a one-inch water line and so forth, but that would need to be reviewed by the engineering. Okay. Well, thank you. Matt, with the, there are a couple of 
what we call business, as I guess, just right around there. And uh, being in a residential zoning area, were these businesses basically there previously grandfathered into the current zoning? Do you know anything about the history behind why? I don't. I, I think the one that um, it, it's in the county has just been in the county okay. for, for quite some time. Um, the other businesses, if there's are, are there are, I'm not aware of any. So, um, you know, the Booth Barn is, as Mitch mentioned, has been there for quite some time. Uh, actually, now it's more conforming than it was when it was used as kind of a uh, kind of a conference center and whatever. But um, so right now it's a piece of place of worship. Um, so. Okay. Other questions for Matt? Thank you, Matt. Thank you. So now we will uh, move into gathering uh, testimony on the application, and we will uh, start with any who are in favor of the application. If uh, they would like to come forward, um, state name and address, and uh, we'd like to limit comment to three minutes. So any who are in favor. Mr. Chair, do they have to sign in also? Good evening, my name is Scott Marchand. I live at 2390 Low Wing Circle. So my house is, the back, my backyard touches the biggest part of that. Um, I've known Mr. Horsley for about 10 years since he, he started his project down here. We've had many discussions over those years on on what he would like to do with that property and which way he would like to go. The one thing I will tell you is that place was a mess and I've lived there for 35 years in that house. Um, what they showed you here was all over there. All right, he's cleaned it up. Um, he, he does good work. This is this is not going to be your typical storage unit. It's not going to be what you see in town. Um, it will beautify that area. It will change a lot of the issues and problems we have there. Over the years, they have talked about building houses uh, and not houses. They want to build apartments and those those types of facilities and. If that's what he was doing today, I'd be on the other end of it, right? Um, the traffic is, I don't, I don't believe, will be a huge problem. Um, it's not going to be the way I understand it, a 24-hour facility. You're gonna have times to get in and get out. It's going to be secure. It's going to be paved. Um, and Again, it's not going to be, you can look at it there, it's not going to be typical storage units that you see in our city right now. Um, so I think some people may look at that and say it's going to be an eyesore. There's been a lot of development up that hill uh, over the years with things that I think people have looked at and said, I don't know, I don't know if we want that and, until it goes in. Um, I think the storage unit business in that area is smart. We, there's nothing around there for anybody. You have to drive across town. And I don't think you're, you're gonna find maybe one other facility in this city that is that secure or close to that. Um, so I think it makes a big difference. He's, he, he does good work. All you have to do is go down and look at his property and look at what he's done and how he's changed that. Um, I think this this piece of property has taken them a long time to get it to where it is right now, and it's beautiful compared to what it was, right? And he's setting it up for this work, and I guess really what I'm telling you is uh, I think this is probably one of the best uses I've heard for that piece of property, in my opinion, and I'm 100% behind it. So, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question for you. Uh, Could we have you come back up for just no. a second? <laughs> I just 
have a question concerning your property borders. It, um, if you have any concerns about the fact the storage unit would have to be lit up 24 hours a day, are you worried about the light? <laughs> Uh, you can come down here on um, any given day during the summer and the lights from the ballpark are running until about midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Um, the, you're not going to have that type of, of lighting in, inside of there. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's he's not going to aim the lights at me. He's going to aim the lights at the business. So um, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I mean, that, I, I guess that's a big thing. I, like I said, I've lived there for 35 years. Those ballparks are noisy year round until winter time gets here. And the lights are on, the lights are on in the winter at times. Uh, it's not an issue. I knew, I knew what I was getting into um, when I moved in there until they put the big lights in. But no, I don't, I, I don't have an issue with it. There's, you know, there's lights on the hill, there's lights all around. I really, I guess what I'm telling you is it's going to beautify that area with what he's going to do. Uh, the security of it is going to be better than it would be if you had apartment buildings or, or renters coming and going um, and, and that kind of traffic moving in and out behind my house at that point. I guess what I would tell you from where I sit is if it was apartments, my house would be for sale. This is a different thing. This is not a, you know, rent a storage unit for five bucks and everybody's going to do it. It's, it's quality, I guess, when I look at it. And I'm not worried about what's going back and forth. The traffic is not going to be, I think, that bad. Maybe, maybe I'll be wrong, but I, I don't think it's going to bother me. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Others that would like to speak in favor. Excuse the dress. I just got off work. My name is Stephen Summerall. I live at 2355 Lewain Circle. And I've been there for 40 years. And I have, I just about did what Marshan said. Uh, I have looked at that property over there. And when he bought that and purchased it, what I saw him do uh, is astronomical. He tore in there and put his time and his sweat. The people he bought it from maybe could have been told to move it out. He moved it out. He took his time from work, so that means expense to him. Everything that he's told me over the time he's had it, he has done what he said and not spared none. When he came to me one, two years ago and told me about that, I rent one of those buildings there uh, from one of the Andersons. And so we see quite a bit of each other. Not a lot, but you know. And when he told me what he was thinking of doing, I was all for it. Uh, I knew that at one time they were thinking of putting residential in there, housing, maybe dual housing, and myself. I think the number of people that would be coming and going, being a housing, maybe a lot of it being rental, I don't think it would be taken care of like he's gonna take care of his. I think you'd see some rundowns and stuff, and I would like to see that in my backyard. My backyard goes out into the baseball field. Uh, he's a man of his word. Uh, as far as lighting, the lighting that he's going to have there is going to be low lighting for security. In other words, I rent some other storage units on south of town, and there's no lighting there. And if you go out there at night, you got to drive with your headlights. You don't have lights to tell you open up your building to be able to see what you got in there. Uh, for years, it never had a fence around it until just lately some other people bought it. It used to be the uh, Herzog's rental out on the south by that Sinclair station. H&H uh, &H Storage was the name of it. And uh, so to me, this is like a Chevrolet 
compared to a Cadillac, to be honest with you. Uh, the unit out there is not paved, it's gravel. Uh, I don't think it has the upkeep that it should have with it. Uh, his is going to be very limited upkeep uh, because of how he's building it and what he's building it out of. Uh, and he, when you think about it, he's the owner and the only person to watch it and take care of it versus if you put individual people in houses, each one's in charge of their own place. Uh, you can come into the circle where I and Marshan live and there are two duplexes in there that absolutely should be knocked down because whoever owns them has not done one thing with them. The paint's peeling off, so it takes our property, which we try and really make look good, and it just tears down our value. This isn't gonna happen here, but it could with apartments, okay? Uh, as for, and, and then again, lighting. Uh, I have a, a, a light on my patio in the backyard. When they're playing baseball, I don't need no lights. That ball field lights up like a Christmas tree, and sometimes they are there till 12 o'clock at night. Plus, the other thing is the noise. You're not going to have noise with storage unit, where if you have, to me, that would be quite a conglomerate of people in a small area. So you're going to have a lot of noise from vehicles, a lot of noise from people. Uh, I just think this is probably the best idea for that piece of property. And the person doing it, I couldn't ask for anyone better to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Any others that would like to speak in favor? I have four, but I have some concerns. You can come now. You can come at the neutral portion. You can come whenever you like. Please stop. Good evening, all. Uh, my name is Ralph Horsley. My wife, Megan. Uh, we purchased this property 10 years ago. Um, that's when I met Scott Marchand. Uh, up there cleaning up a mess, actually. Um, we bought the property to, uh, to do a development of some sort. At the time, we, uh, we'd have to drive past it to get home every day. Uh, so when we purchased the property, we knew there'd be some hurdles, uh, not only to, to clean it up, to figure out what we wanted to do with it at that point, uh, things progressed slowly. Like I say, it's 10 years ago we've been working on this. Um, so as things progressed, we cleaned, we had some ideas, we you know, had, had built a shop for our use on the bottom end, um, trying to get that developed uh, and cleaned up to where it, it was a usable, usable piece of property. Um, we pretty much fell in love with it. Um, yeah, it was it was in town but out of town. So we spent as much time probably down on the shop property and uh, patio as we do in our own home. Uh, we enjoy it, we love being there. And uh, like I say, the development that we're looking at building, um, we want to do it right. We want to, I want to say this is the only one in Pocatello. I, when it comes out, uh, there's dust control, we've, we've covered that. Uh, full security, lighting, back to the lighting issue. Uh, we're we're going to have enough lighting that you can get around, the cameras will work, um, but it's not going to be a nuisance lighting. Um, we want to make it accessible in and out, snow removal, be able to get people in and out comfortably. Um, with the uh, office building and restrooms, um, over the years we've rented we've rented units, and it seems like the first thing that happens, you open the gate, you get in before you get the door up. Kids got to use the bathroom. You shut the gate, you go back out. Uh, so we wanted to, you know, have something available that you could actually go in if you needed to spend two hours. You could if you wanted to go up up to the office area. If you wanted to microwave your burrito, you could actually, you know, do your sorts your materials, do what you need to do there. Um, so we want to we want to step it up in that fashion. Um, like say, as far as the security side of it, uh, every inch of that will be covered as far as security. Uh, cameras in all directions. Um, we want to run this as a very tight business. Uh, in, as far as operating hours, we look at it as far as operating hours as we would like to, you know, lean in the direction of uh, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you can't figure out in that time frame that you have something you need to do, then then that needs to be addressed. 
Um, we're sensitive to the fact if there is a customer in there that they do need to get to a wheel, something, something critical, yes, you'll be escorted in and escorted out um, as comfort to the neighbors that know there's not going to be anybody down there two, three o'clock in the morning doing things that uh, that they could have done between 6 a.m. and 10. Uh, so like I say, we, uh, we want to make a nice facility and, uh, and be a good neighbor to, to the good neighbors that we have. Like I say, we, uh, that's what we're after. Thank you. Mr. Horsley? Yes. Under the staff conditions, if approved, they recommend 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as the hours of operation. Okay. Um, yes, I, I, I did hear about that. Um, I don't think that's conducive to a business of this stature to the fact, you know, a lot of people are getting off at work at five o'clock in the afternoon to try to get, you know, get from their, get from their home, get undressed, get cleaned up at, that's a, that's a pretty short window uh, in the evenings where in the, the summer times, you know, it's not dark until 10 o'clock. Um, I, I think as a business that, you know, to that window of operation a little longer um, would be, would be critical to the business. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any that are neutral on the application that would like to come forward? Um, my name is Jessica Watson, and I live at 9222 North Anderson Lane, which is where's the one? Um, this home right here. Okay. Um, anyways, I have a letter along with some pictures. You guys look so um, first off, I like to say um, we love Ralph. He is a great neighbor, and um, the upgrades that he's made to his property, uh, um, I'm sure, is going to what is going to flow over to here. Um, we're looking forward to um, having um, the changes made um, to that, and I think that um, it um, will make it prettier. I might block my son, but we <laughs> Um, th um, this, th this is my concern with the pro pro proposed development of Pocatello safety or Creek's safety storage. There is no place for the rain and spring, spring flood waters to naturally flow. The city of Pocatello in the past approved developments that made changes to the city streets um, that caused significant increase in flooding on my property and he also his property. I know once uh, there was over a foot of. Um, of standing water and um, one of his his buildings right there, um, and we tried to um, make the water flow flow off into the field naturally because of the way that it was flowing. Um, if if that doesn't go into the field, it will go down the road. Um, we have a um, our pump station, our well right there, and. Um, if it goes naturally down there, it will actually just go into our well or into um, my personal basement. Um, okay, so anyways, um, okay, so there's increased in flooding on my property and the property in question located at the 9100 block of, of Anderson Lane. I worry if, if this development is approved, there will not be a place for the water to flow. Um, except for the basement of my home. Before this no development was approved um, and works move, moves forward, I think we need to find a solution to the flooding problem that has been ca caused on my property and the property of Mr. Horsley's. Um, these need to be addressed and resolved by the city of Pocatello. I do not have any problems at all with the development, um, so long as the flooding issues um, cause caused by the city and um, although the city is part of it I think also this um, Bannock County is part if you'll see on those pictures um, I've shown you a picture where this they say this is um, city property um, you have floodwaters come down from that city or from the county into the city um, but it's there's a lot of a lot of water that comes into onto that property. Um, there, okay, so some items to take into consideration. There's usually standing water on Hotel Creek Road. In the area pictured below, running right along um, my property, the standing water can be more than 
Um, 20 to 30 yard stretch stretches causes me many vehicles to hydroplane. This safety um, issue is very dangerous to drive when and during a light rainstorm. I know concerned citizens have contacted the city in the past about this issue and a solution to the problem has not yet been found, but to try to divert where the water into my field. Um, the field has been used, um, the, the, they're gonna use right, right here. Um, has been used for livestock, although this area right here was um, machinery, and I know that there was dump trucks and also other machinery a lot right here. Um, for as long as I can remember, um, sometimes horses, sometimes a few cows. Um, the the flood flooding has not been as bad since the, since has not been as bad. Um, but once the city made the changes. Um, to the to the natural or the natural place place for rain and spring water to flow it has made its its way naturally to focus on the sorry I'm a little confused with that sentence and the city approved the development above the hill just north of the property because of the development the spring rain runoff is not allowed to naturally sleep into the ground the water now runs now down onto my property and then to the property um, over here. Um, the city has has come and replaced a 20 and 30 foot stretch of roadway. When they replaced the new road, um, they it was a slight decline onto um, to the to the south that added um, allowing most of the runoff from the hill to go directly into my field next to my house. Um, after the this, the city came and replaced. Um, this short strip of road lay around, allowing the runoff to flow directly onto my property. I have had over five inches of standing water in my field um, this last spring and the, the spring before that. Um, the sludge runoff, uh, runoff deposited in some areas of my field is about two inches of new soil. Um, I'm just trying to tell you this so that you can get an idea of how much water and runoff is coming into there and then goes off goes off into this area. Um, the natural flow of the runoff and rain spring flood goes directly into the field and below and that this is, that is planned for this development, the development of Pocatello Creek, Pocatello Creek safety storage. Um, the next possible natural flow way of excessive water would be my basement. Um, and I'm hoping that we could work some type of plan to get it so that it doesn't go, or when this development is built, that it's not going to go into my basement or the pump house. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. Those are my concerns. Very good. Thank you. Are there others that uh, would like to give neutral testimony? Okay, I'm Sheila Griffiths. I live at 887 Lot Road. Um, I own the house that she's talking about. I inherited it from my parents, so I have a long history of what it is. She is leasing to own, so she also has great concerns about it. And the, and the city, the reason why it floods so bad is the west, and I don't know that's the proper name, but the west subdivision right across from the KOA, when that was developed, the city and the county should have both made sure this water runoff didn't occur. So they are at fault for allowing it, but they don't want to do anything about it now. Well, um, it every time it rains, it washes out the road. And it's a gravel road, and Ralph has said that he's put $5,000 into it just this year to get the washboard out and the gravel on it to make it a nice road. Um, he has equipment so he can, and, and that's not even the cost of the equipment, that's just the repair into the road. So the water does a lot of damage, not only to the road, but now she's saying the city's made it so that it even goes into her um, field and leaves that soot to, the point that it finally levels down and goes right to her house. Um, he will do beautiful work, I guarantee it. And part of that beautiful work is he's going to have a greenway all the way down the lane. 
but that greenway will act as a dam to stop it from flooding his property like it's done in the past. It used to, a lot of it go into his property, like the shop that he had there. He says he has to put things on pallets to keep it from being damaged when it floods. But if he stops it from going through with that dam, with the, flood, the greenway that will act as a dam because it'll be made out of rocks, big rocks, because that's what he's done on this other one. And he's wise to do it. But it will dam it up. So now it all comes to our property, not some of it, but all of it. And at the end of that greenway, which the natural flow is to go that way, is our pump house, which she mentioned, that is six feet underground, below ground level. So that's the first thing it'll fill up before it probably even fills up her house, is our pump house. So it is crucial that it be fixed. And having this new subdivision will make our problem worse. It will solve his flooding, but it will make ours worse. And I hope that it's not approved without being addressed and fixed. Um, it's not just the city's problem, it's not just the county's problem, but they are both at fault because the West subdivision has city and county roads and that they passed and should have made sure this was addressed in the first place. But I hope they won't pass this and just leave us to get flooded. And so I hope that you guys can recommend that maybe it be fixed, but this ride along with it has to be addressed also. And the cost of it come out, the city and the county both combined. Um, let's see. Um, Your three minutes are That's expired. probably it. Again, I know he'll do great work but this is a problem that has been bad in the past, but it will be 10 times worse because a lot of flooding went to his property. But now there's no way it'll get to it. They'll just go down to our pump house and eventually to our house too. And they'll keep washing out the road worse. All right, thank you. Questions? Okay. Are there others that would like to give neutral testimony? Mike Seibert, 1665 Hotel Creek Road, about 3,000 foot west of that site. And I'm far enough away, what happens there don't impact me, whether you build it or don't build it. It's more or less up to the P and Z Commission and the neighbors to decide what fits into their neighborhood. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk about is that property has tried to be developed several times over the years and nothing came about. And it probably needs to something happen on it sooner or later to be cleaned up. Uh, I remember you mentioned blighting. Well, one thing to keep in mind now in the future crime is inversely proportional to lighting. So the more lighting you have, the less crime you have. So, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, and I have a similar situation on a piece of property. I, it's uh, about 10 acres, 3,000 foot west of there, and I'm trying to decide what to do with it. I decided, well, maybe RV park, laid it out, didn't do that. We looked at doing a commercial uh, office park, then we ran into fire flow problems on too small a water line on Oak Trail Creek Road to meet the fire code. So recently I went back, and I came back to storage units. So I'm here to gauge, I guess, your viewpoint of storage units in the, in the area. And this one's in a residential area, and I just, look, I just laid out 500 units on 10 acres uh, in a commercial general zone. And uh, I guess if you support it here, I guess we should, it also be able, should be able to support the conditional use permit in a CG zone. So anyway, it looks 
and this his loud looks real good. Yeah, it looks a lot better than what I had mine. <laughs> Thank you. Others that are neutral? Jan Nish, 1624 North Arthur. I'm nowhere close to this, and I'm totally neutral. It looks like a great design. However, I am very, I have sat in on countless PNC and plans and stuff, and I know the situations like this, lighting is a big deal. And it's one thing to have lights go off at midnight, it's another thing to have them on until 4 or 5 in the morning. Where I live, they put a light in the parking lot behind behind me, which was very needed for safety. But it really affected my sleep. I had to flip my bedroom to the, to the other room I had because it does affect. And um, you can see that there's a lot of interest to do this, but I am just voicing my concern over lighting that it's sufficient for security is natural going to have to have that just perhaps there needs to be a condition about the kind of lighting how it's angled how it affects beyond their borders i mean having um, landscaping is one thing but lights are above that so that's just all just voice my caution about the lighting and how it affects throughout the night for those that live nearby very good. Thank you. Any others that are neutral on the application? Then uh, any that might be opposed to the application that would like to give testimony? Okay, seeing none, we would like to turn it back to the applicant for any rebuttal. I'll try to do a bit of rebuttal, but uh, maybe Ralph will want to step in and take my, uh, take my place here. But. Uh, so why hasn't the project developed? It's the utilities, it's the access. Uh, one, of the, one of the concerns is, you know, looping through and finding a secondary access. So once you start putting resident, permanent residences in there, you start to have to work through those issues and, and that's really what's held it back. So um, there is also some floodplain uh, where we have kind of some of this outdoor storage concentrated that, uh, can make sense for that floodplain rather than, uh, say, a house. So that's uh, those are some of the issues that have hurt the project or hurt the property as far as actually uh, developing. Uh, so one thing you got to take from this uh, presentation is this isn't a final design. This uh, this is. The concept right uh, so we know a lot about the property but we have certainly not designed anything there yet so as far as addressing water issues and things like that I think we have an opportunity to do that be rather than make the, the problem worse as has been um, presented I think we maybe have an opportunity to improve things um, there's certainly a way to maybe get the water down instead of creating a dam maybe we create some type of conveyance in those uh, those uh, landscaped areas that could potentially convey the water on down and, and make its way to the creek uh, as it's intended to go um, so I think there's an opportunity and one of the nice things is you know mr. Horsley essentially owns down to the creek so there's an opportunity maybe to improve things for the neighbors as well as uh, still facilitate the project. Uh, we're not aware of all the flooding issues at this point, so as the project goes through the design, we want to work with the neighbors and certainly Mr. Horsley to try to figure out a way to solve it. Uh, we don't want to put a project in there that's going to make it worse, obviously. We have an opportunity to, to do some things to make it better. Uh, lighting is obviously a big deal on both sides of the equation. We want safe, we want, uh, you know, we don't want to disturb the neighbors, but I think the neighbors, again, have been living with lighting. Um, as they said, maybe it's not all night, but uh, there these these lights here, I don't, you probably can't get a perspective as to really how big they are, but they're giant um, on this field. And so, you know, they put out a fair amount of lighting uh, around this area. There's also, some shops that will be removed 
uh, when this project goes in. So there's there's other uh, there's other buildings within uh, Mr. Horsley's property that's going to get uh, removed that we didn't uh, uh, discuss. Um, so I think we want to be aware of the lighting. We're certainly, I think there was a condition in there on the maximum height and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all uh, in favor of that. We want to be aware of what the neighbors uh, uh, need and, and want to be sensitive to that. So I think, you know, this is one of those cases where, again, when you look at the, really what's there, you know, it, it, on the surface, you say, hey, we're going to put storage right in the middle of this residential neighborhood. That's really not what's happening here. And I think if you listen to the residents, that, you know, most of what's in favor here, and you listen to Ralph, and you, you look at, at what it's going to be, I think it really can fit in this in this instance. And and we hope that you'll, uh, you'll kind of look at the overall application and find that it will fit and will be an asset to the city. So with that, I can answer questions or yeah, The only, um, I guess I should have waited for you to ask if we had. Go ahead. <laughs> but the only uh, condition I've heard any, I guess, concern about is the hours of operation uh, that was stated earlier. Um, is there any of the other conditions that the staff recommended to alleviate some of their concerns that are? No. I think we're good, and I think if you really think about it, you know, people sometimes maybe before work might want to run in there and, and get something that they need. You know, storage sometimes is, as we heard, uh, you know, contractors use that a lot of times, and so they might want to get that at that time and then head to work. And then after work, you know, people, I don't get off until 6 or 7. I know I always see Ryan driving around working at that time, so... Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of extended hours on the other end, it makes sense as well to be able to actually make that system function. So and again, we want to work with the neighbors and, and be friendly there. But And it talks about an automated security gate, I guess, and I know these are just renderings and preliminary and nothing final, but you're aware that they're calling for an automated I gate. I think the intent of was to put something in there that was automated, so I, I, don't, I don't think that's... Uh, Different, but, you know. There, there are other storage unit facilities that have that have that through our community. Thank you, Mitch. Do you know, or can you show on the map where the floodplain lines are? Do you have um, an it's, idea? It, it, it kind of cuts through a little bit of this bottom building, so okay. we're going to have to elevate this building a little bit. But I think you know most of this is within the floodplain, essentially. Other questions for Mitch? Okay, thank you. With that, I will close the public hearing. I had one link, not sure you're okay, one link member come in. If, would you have a chance to speak? Um, we're going to go ahead and close it, so thank you. Um, if uh, there is discussion that we would like to have, Commissioners. Can we get Matt? Okay. Matt, would you come up for a question? So this is mainly just out of my curiosity, but rezoning to light industrial, what other um, businesses, projects, things could be in that kind of uh, zoning? Well, it's contract rezoning, so it's specific to this use. Okay. So nothing else would be permitted other than what's being proposed. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I would just uh, point out, uh, I guess, a couple of things that stood out to me in, in hearing the hearing and, and the public comment, and I appreciate all of that. One is that it seems that there's been a history on this particular, particular parcel to try to develop it, put it to beneficial use, but it's been limited um, because of uh, the situation there, and, and so uh, even the neighbors seem to agree that this would be the best use that it could be put to would at least impact upon their concerns of being a residential neighborhood around. I, I've heard the comments about the flooding. I'm sensitive to that because that comes up often here in our meetings. But I would point out that this is only for the rezoning and this is not for the final development. And so any kind of stormwater considerations, any kind of water flow runoff 
considerations would come at a later hearing and so uh, any recommendation today is certainly not a final stamp on the final plans but simply saying that it could be rezoned so that they can move forward with the development to, to go forward uh, there today and, and so based on the comments and everything that's been said i i would like to make a motion that we approve agenda item number five to allow the contract rezone uh, on the property located in the 9100 block of Anderson Lane. Um, I would also uh, move that in that, that the staff's conditions be in incorporated in there, but I do have concern over condition number four. Um, the staff has said from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I don't think it's necessarily the, the I don't know if it would be required by the this commission to make a final determination, but to uh, leave it open for the uh, applicant and the um, planning and uh, zoning or the, the city planning and zoning department to continue to discuss that and see if some reasonable compromise can be made on the hours of operation with an understanding that this isn't going to be a 24-hour facility, that there would be a, a start time and a stop time but to leave that open for further consideration. But all other staff recommendations to be adopted. And also that you as the chair be authorized to sign the findings of fact. That was really long. That was Did anyone get that down? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting paid by the words. <laughs> as an attorney <laughs> um, Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. So we have a motion and a second, and uh, if there's some discussion that we would like to have, I guess I'd like to uh, put my two cents in there as well. I think that, you know, when I first saw this project on paper, it, it wasn't my favorite. Um, you know, you kind of look at it and you kind of wonder, okay, is it necessary to, to change zoning in something like this? But I think as you kind of look over it, um, there is some sense behind it. And I think the improvements that have been done thus far certainly uh, appreciate it and, uh, and well done. And, and I guess the hope would be is that would continue. On uh, the item number four, as far as the hours and stuff, um, I probably tend to agree with the applicant that... Uh, if you do limit it between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., it might be a little too restrictive for what uh, uh, something like that could offer its patrons there. And so I would uh, also support extending that time frame, um, especially since, I mean, if you think about it, having an apartment uh, building or something going in there, you're going to have a lot of of traffic after midnight that's that's going in and out of there and uh, and so even just restricting it from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, to me seems fairly reasonable but uh, any other discussion on the motion yeah I'm a little torn because I really like infill projects um, just not having to expand out and sprawl um, I I appreciate what everyone has said for a public hearing, you know, the positive, the neutral, and the things that definitely need to be looked at um, as this project may or may not move forward, and then anything else that comes up in the future. Um, on the other hand, it does kind of look like a concrete jungle in the middle of this green, open, treed area. So I'm, I'm a little torn. I do want to say for the reassurance of the neighbors who are worried about stormwater, they will have to come back forward for a, is it a preliminary plat? They actually won't have to do a preliminary plat on this. The rest of this building will actually just go through the, the oh, building department. Oh, so there's department. nobody um, to approve the stormwater? It's through the building department and through that uh, uh, application, uh, that would have to be handled. Those, that would typically give me concern, but having heard so much testimony about this applicant and the kind of neighbor he's been and the history that he has, it doesn't strike me as an applicant who's going to um, take advantage. just take advantage of the neighbors by uh, damming off his property so that he's safe and that he's flooding them. I think if there's a way uh, uh, to be able to get that stormwater back to the creek, it sounds like that be willing to work with his developer or his engineers to see that that happens. And, and it's frankly to his advantage too because he has a, a, his own shop back there that's flooding. So right. getting that's a permanent solution. 
And there are stormwater laws in place that uh, do uh, dictate how flows can be changed and if and when and what impacts those have. And so there are legal ramifications as well that he takes on in doing this development that he'll want to make sure uh, he follows in order to protect himself legally. So. Any other discussion? I just get the impression that uh, if this project doesn't go through, that it won't get developed at all. That there's just so many obstacles to other projects that nothing will happen. Yeah. All right, with no other, uh, Eastland, would you call the vote? Hancock? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Burnt? Yes. Hargraves? Yes. Moore? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Saturday. Yes. Motion carries. That concludes our meeting. Thank you for coming.